What's up y'all, I'm Matt Jumper. I design brands and websites for a living and I use Framer to bring them to life. So a couple months ago, I dropped a video with Flex Academy that basically walked you through five Framer websites that I handpicked for your inspiration. A bunch of you wanted this to be an ongoing segment, so I'm back with five more. So I'm gonna go through the list and break down what I love about each site. So let's kick things off the portfolio of Claudio Giglieri, and hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. But this is a beautiful site. And without even scrolling, I know this guy is a senior designer and he just knows what he's doing based off the few elements I see on the screen here. I feel like no one really uses carousels or sliders and heroes anymore, but this is really well executed featuring different work. The graphics are beautiful and super clear and actually thought out to make sure that the layout is always balanced and all the text is legible. Claudio is the head of design at Opal, which I'm definitely getting from this design style, especially on the second slide here. This is basically a recreation of the Opal website. And I only mentioned this because it actually looks sick. So like, why not? And he's actually establishing his own unique style and just owning it and I'm all for it. That's why people hire designers like this. Another thing that he's using here and on Opal is the difference blend mode on the text. So you get this effect where basically parts of the text are inverted depending on the color um, of the background behind it. So the text is always relatively visible. Anyway, so all the type and the layout here is really thought out and the cursor changing um, to the left and the right arrow as controls like taking over your cursor, um, it's done really elegantly. I like the transitions as well. Um, especially on the bottom indicator and the description, along with the call to action in the corner. Again, everything in this layout is working to be really balanced. As you scroll down, you're essentially in now a giant footer that's taken up your full viewport with a very clear next step, um, either you know getting in touch with them or if you're still exploring, going into his feed. And before I click through, let's just take a second to appreciate the nice hover state on the contact call to action. It's really slick. Um, as well as the hover state on the image. And you'll notice it's a lot more subtle, which is actually a good move here. Since the hover state on the call to action above, it's a bit loud or whatever you wanna call it, but it's nice that the hover state beneath this is more chill and not making the whole section overwhelming. Cause when you put too many animations in one area, it can just become too much. It's also a nice touch that the contact form slides in as you reach the bottom of the screen, a really nice kind of push to get in touch. And then if you check out his other screens, the layouts only get better. There's so much elegant type, thoughtful layouts, and obviously just like beautiful images because his work is pretty sick. So I highly recommend spending a few minutes exploring his whole site. Next we have Myth. So this is a Web3 gaming website. This was made by Stephanie Bruce, a really talented designer out of London. So starting with the preloader, while I'm not always an advocate for them, I think this is an example of using one to actually help set the tone and further establish the brand. The scrambled text, the monospace font, the subtle animations, definitely well executed and feel really cohesive together into a nice package. Then we land on the ethereal hero, which is super clean. And there are a couple subtle animations here. So there's clouds in the background, they're actually animated. And then the rock behind the text actually subtly reacts to your cursor movement. So some nice um, subtle animations. I like this single clear call to action with the join the waitlist text and the hover state is following that same scramble text animation that was established in the preloader. So great for consistency. The open navigation state is pretty cool too, blurring out the items not in focus. Then as you scroll, I'm really digging these really open and breathable layouts that are well thought out and a bit unconventional, uh, but they really work. The scroll animations and the hover states are subtle and do a nice job of bringing hits of delight without being too overwhelming, which is a very tough line to walk. I'm also digging the jagged button design style as well. It feels very cohesive with the overall aesthetic. And then as you keep scrolling, there are more subtle effects um, that, you know, these details really make the site feel more polished. And all the type and layouts, honestly, they're just perfect. At the footer now, we have this really cool kind of like flashlight animation interaction um, with the join the discord call to action and whatever this little wacky mystical character is. Um, super cool. The text definitely is not accessible, which I don't love, but it's a very fun interaction either way. Other than that, it's a beautiful site. And honestly, there's nothing but more design gold if you go into the inside pages. So I suggest checking that out and getting lost in the world of myth. So for our third site, we have the design portfolio of Antoine Enault. When I first landed on this site, I had to double check there's actually built in Framer. Um, Cause I actually just automatically assumed that this animation was built with code. That's how cool it was, but I was wrong. So the site is built in Framer and that's not code. It's actually, spline embed, which is free 3D software. That's super intuitive to use. It's basically the Figma of 3D software um, and it's free. Um, it allows you to integrate your 3D objects and animations and interactions directly into your Framer site and do this really cool interactive stuff like this. So this is so cool. I love that 
there's no code involved with this at all. What a fun way to start a site and be different. So as we scroll, we get into super clear introduction that sticks at the top of the browser, and then it gets overtaken by these beautiful snippets of work. It's a really nice touch having different colored circle in the middle of each thumbnail that gently expands into the project title, location, and description on hover. Then clicking into a project, the hero, pretty sick. Uh, it ties into the whole like explosive type from the homepage, uh, but it's done to be a bit more legible because this text is actually important um, compared to what the hero was in the homepage. Um, although still not close to anything that you expect for like a traditional title. Uh, the first letter of each word though is rotated 90 degrees and then scrolls away at different speeds as you head down. So I think that's uh, a nice way to just be different and set some aesthetic tone. There's some elegant type for an intro and then we get treated with all these beautiful images um, with a subtle appear animation on each. Just perfect, chef's kiss. Um, I also love at the footer, this super wide edge to edge grid of all the work. Um, it's a nice take to see these all at once instead of just like, hey, here's your next one or two or three images to show. When you click on overview in the navigation, um, this is a super simple layout, but again, just so beautifully executed and filled with like real design eye candy. Um, just really nice to look at. I think this is a great idea as well to show off single snippets of work that don't have a full case study around them. I'm probably gonna incorporate something like this when I design and launch my next portfolio in the next 20 years. We know it's not gonna happen, but it's a good practice to do of like not overthinking and just like putting out work. On the info screen, we get into basically a masterclass in just creating like an engaging layout with just typography and white space. And the titles here have that same really unique scroll animation together. So the site feels cohesive. All in all, this is a beautiful site, not doing too much and just choosing its areas of delight and kind of going all in on them. Next, we have ApeFest. So this is a crypto slash NFT event happening in Lisbon later this year for the infamous Board Ape Yacht Club. The creative direction on the site is pretty spot on um, and it is very much aligned with their brand. Um, so starting with the obvious, the logo type and the fonts are super solid here. And again, they feel really connected to the Board Ape aesthetic. They did a really good job with this stuff. The hero, super minimal and saves the fancy stuff for further down the page which makes the call to action super clear and actionable in the hero. I'm also digging the ticker here. Usually the tickers, um, we're used to them being like announcement bars at the very top of the browser, edge to edge and like a solid color, um, extending the full width. I like this floating ticker that is a fixed width and floating and it has an illustration of, of like a running ape inside. The text feels different. So this is a nice take on um, a ticker and it's also a call to action. So if you hover over it, you actually see, um, you get a hover state. As we scroll, we get these really sick illustrations um, and they're using scroll speeds in these different layers to create this cool parallaxing effect, which honestly, it's nothing new, like that's definitely been done. Then they take it a step further and they actually have the ocean illustrating, illustration rotating on a loop, which is a really nice touch. Um, the title font is really cool and it pairs really well with the body font. Um, it's a, just a really interesting pairing. The 3D ape here, pretty sick. And then breaking the layout is definitely the move. It definitely adds more visual impact here um, and like adds a bit more depth. I also think they did a really good job of using color on the site, like anchoring it in the black and beige and then using the pinks, reds, and the blues as accents. I think they nailed it with the color. And on top of that, the typography pretty much everywhere is really good, but the cool tra scroll transform going on with the outlined apes moving out from behind the middle one, that's super cool. And then we get another ticker animation and, and then another scroll transform with the circle. But the scroll transform one, I love this one because I, I love animations that actually follow your scroll position and aren't like a single trigger that do this whole thing. Then we get to this super tall ape graphic that is the same height as all the content beside it. So it's like really stretched out. This just feels really different from what I'm used to seeing and it's intentional. So I appreciate this for sure. I think that's a cool idea. On this Twitter call out, um, there's a custom cursor override, which to be honest, I was expecting something different as far as the graphic goes, like somehow being connected to Twitter or being a external link or anything, but that's all right. It's still cool. Um, still a aesthetic decision. Um, and then lastly, we hit a footer, which is a giant crisp ape head on a solid black background, which I like this as a finale. You start minimal, you end minimal and also really bold, but I dig it. Last but not least, we have a portfolio of Alejandro Muscolini. This is one way to make your portfolio stand out. Um, but to be honest, he didn't have me in the first half there. So when I first landed here, um, it actually didn't really catch me uh, with like the Memoji and then like the kind of just a block of text on the right. 
Um, that didn't catch me. But as I scrolled into it, I see that he actually designed a calendar. Um, and then I kind of got lost in it. So instead of pulling a full portfolio together of case studies, which obviously like as a designer, that's the hardest thing to do in the world. He made a calendar grid in Framer and just posted like kind of single images or videos on days where he has work to show, um, which I love the idea. It is a lot easier to do this than like put out full case studies and it can be just as valuable, if not more valuable to just see snippets of UI versus going deep into a case study where you're kind of talking through your ass to be honest, right? Um, and overall, this site is giving me Amy calendar energy and I'm here for it. Um, I like the vibe. He has random shapes in between um, some of the work and like some random like calendar reminders included like an out of office vacation reminder, um, which is a nice human touch. It's cool. And then you can also click and drag any of the elements and just like totally destroy his calendar, which I think is a bit ironic, um, but it's a fun little interaction, little moment of delight. I like the hover states. Um, the shapes give a little wiggle and the images kind of shrink a bit. Um, so everything feels just kind of cohesive and like those little details seem thought out. I also like the first and the last calendar slot is a placeholder of basically your project here. I think it's a nice playful call to action to work with him um, and it makes sense in the context of what he's kind of putting here. We end the site with a giant footer and call to action, which is fine. Um, I think the copy here could probably use some love to be honest. I do realize that English is his second language. He is from Argentina and there's a Spanish language toggle in the navigation. I don't think I've seen a language toggle in the wild on a portfolio before. So kudos to him to actually um, make his site in both languages. That probably helps a lot. But if I had one piece of feedback, I do wish the images would get bigger if I clicked on them because it's kind of hard to <laughs> engage a design when it's, you know, so small. For now, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and just say, nice work. All right, so that concludes this round of five framer sites that you need to check out. Hope you enjoyed my breakdown. Let me know if you have any other sites that I missed or any other requests for another video in the comments below. See you all soon and don't forget to like and subscribe.